I know you're smiling today. Wonder if it will be the same tomorrow. Let's see. But what's your big takeaway, Raghav, from today's result? Uh, one big takeaway is that the people of Delhi and people at large, voters at large, reject politics of falsehood and abuse. They have once again rewarded Arvind Kejriwal for his upright, clean politics and politics which is based on issues of providing basic amenities to people like electricity, water, education, healthcare and politics that revolves around issues. BJP's campaign of throwing muck at us, uh, running slanderous uh, defamatory campaigns, coming out with fabricated videos, so on and so forth has been rejected outrightly by the people and people have voted uh, for a pro-governance, pro-people party like the Aam Aadmi Party. Sure, it Raghav. is also <coughs> perhaps for the first time that yeah. AAP was... Go ahead, go ahead Raghav, sorry, go ahead. That we were, we were against, uh, that we were against, the Aam Aadmi Party was fighting an incumbent BJP. In Delhi, we fought an incumbent Congress. In Punjab, we fought and won against an incumbent Congress. Mm. In Delhi, we fought against an incumbent BJP, we defeated them. And one big message that today this small municipal election which has been nationalized by the BJP and which has essentially become a high voltage election has sent out is that it's only the, uh, the Aam Aadmi Party that can uh, take on the BJP and defeat the BJP and is the alternative to the BJP whether it's at the municipal level or uh, whether it's at a, at a national level. And I say this because Delhi represents literally every state, every society in this country. And as right. Prime Minister used to say, jo Delhi ke dil mein hai, wo desh ke dil mein hai. Okay. So, so this election a, sends right. out a loud and clear message that's of rejection of politics of abuse and falsehood. That's an interesting point. That this is the first time that actually it's been AAP versus BJP. Yeah. And you've quote unquote dislodged the BJP, which has not happened so far. But Raghav, the, the, the point that being made is, especially in BJP circles, the fact that the exit suggested that you would be winning with a landslide, you know, close to almost 200 seats, ended up with about 130. It's still a win, but it's a less emphatic win than suggested. Well, to that you, you would know, say Vasu, it's, I'll draw from an, I'll, I'll draw from an analogy of a meritorious student who scores above 90% in all his exams, sometimes 92%, sometimes 95%, sometimes 99%. Mm. <laughs> and in one fine midterm exam, he scores 80%. And somehow <laughs> people around him, may, you know, uh, wish to believe that the result has been unfavorable. No, you know, the, the student has still passed uh, his exam with a distinction. And I think that's something similar. No, no, that's, that's fair uh, has enough. I just in Delhi, where AAP has been. No, no, has I just, been I, I, my, my thing was: Were you expecting a? Uh, were you expecting around this number? Were you thinking it'll be a landslide? Well, quite frankly, I was expecting the number to be, of course, higher than what the number actually is. Right. But having said that, the election that the campaign that the BJP ran by bringing in more than seven chief ministers, more than 17 union cabinet ministers, more than 100 members of parliament, entire national organization of the BJP and the Rashtra Swayam Sevak Sangh, and above all, the agencies, the use of the CBI, the ED, the income tax, forget all this, they even roped in a con man who's suffering a jail sentence in Tihar jail as one of their star pracharaks. Right. There so was also the delimitation, and this yeah. machinery was, there was also used the delimitation to stop one of man. the constituency. Plus, plus yeah. there was the delimitation, yeah. as Nidhi rightly points out. There was a very convenient delimitation process that was conceived and executed right. sitting in the BJP's national office, where the, the entire uh, constituency election. boundaries were redrawn in a way to favor the BJP. Yeah, and also so, the, remember so, the, so United in, in the, nutshell, the United the United the three uh, people, the MCDs, the, the three MCDs. Dorab uh, has a question, Mr. Raghav. Mr. Dorab, uh, you know it must be a matter of some concern. Well, to may you. I just finish my brief point? Sure. Yes, yes. Yes, Raghav, go ahead. I was only saying that all these big forces, these big guns, ministers, chief ministers, agencies. Uh, might of the central government, everything was used and unleashed at the Aam Aadmi Party. Yet, 
आम आदमी पार्टी अ स्मॉल पार्टी दैट हैज कम फ्रॉम हम्बल ओरिजिन दैट रिप्रेजेंट दी आम आदमी हैज मैनेज टू डिफीट द वर्ल्ड बिगेस्ट पार्टी एंड द मोस्ट पावरफुल पार्टी एंड दैट टू इन द नेशनल कैपिटल एंड दैट टू क्वाइट कन्विंसिंगली आई थिंक द आम आदमी पार्टी हैज डन इट्स बेस्ट ऑफकोर्स देर इज स्कोप फॉर इंप्रूवमेंट एंड स्कोप फॉर इंट्रोस्पेक्शन फॉर एवरी पार्टी एंड वी विल ऑफकोर्स डू दैट ओके बट फिफ्टीन ईयर्स ऑफ बीजेपी रूल इन एम सी डी एंड टूडे एंड pro people government of the aam aadmi party and arvind kejriwal is hereby installed in the mcd oh, okay Mr. Dharap, Chadda, Dharap. you know you won decisively there's no doubt about that the question i have is that in relation to the assembly polls the bjp has actually kept its 2020 assembly vote intact yeah you have dropped more than 10% is that a cause of some concern and don't forget the bjp in 2025 like it did in 2020 will all bring all the big guns the ministers the ed the cbi the whole lot they did that in 2022 i'm just saying that is it a matter of some concern to you that in relation the 2020 result you've dropped 10% of the vote while the bjp has you know the held its assembly vote you see if you were to compare the 2014 lok sabha voting percentage of the bjp and the aam aadmi party with the 2015 vidhan sabha you would find that bjp gets 54 55% in lok sabha and aam aadmi party gets 54 55% in the vidhan sabha in 2019 lok sabha also bjp yes. got more than 50% but one year later in 2020 vidhan sabha aap gets more than 50% so you know the vote share in delhi somehow for some reason keeps on fluctuating In I'm, fact, sorry, in it does not I'm sorry the mcd it elections we got between the lok sabha and the vidhan sabha so as you get closer to home you do better as yeah. you become national you are becoming very home close to home in mcd and yet you not held your share i accept entirely what you say about the lok sabha that in fact you were number 3 in 2019 in the lok sabha in delhi yeah. not my even number 18% two. just 18% so the question share. is my well, larger point my my larger the point that i wanted to draw from this th- these numbers is that every election is completely different in its flavor its uh, uh, touch and feel in 2017 mcd we were at 26% only 26% vote share in delhi today we are far more than that so i think every election has its own uh, you know uh, 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 temperature and flavor and therefore the vote share keeps on fluctuating right. however as i said there is room, room for improvement there is uh, uh, you know uh, scope for introspection and we will certainly introspect how in certain areas where we were hoping to do uh, phenomenally well we have managed to do uh, you know pretty uh, ordinarily or pretty average stuff R- and in in areas where we wanted to do exceedingly well uh, 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 we have done exceedingly well so i think all those areas and all those constituencies will be studied by the party in 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 uh, greater detail raghav you also in charge of the gujarat campaign and just looking ahead to tomorrow's result and now now i know you're supposed to but don't say we we're, we're going to win a f- absolute majority <laughs> can we ask an honest assessment from you i mean what would the aap genuinely consider a win in gujarat under the circumstances with the bjp as the favorites is it an you know a certain minimum vote share <coughs> or is it a certain number of seats that would satisfy you because you are a relatively new entrant i mean this is the first time you're contesting in such a big way in gujarat i'm not comparing it to last time so is there a certain target that you have that would make you all happy even if the predictions uh, of the and the estimates that have been put forward by the exit polls were to come true aap is likely to become a national party that is the lowest hanging fruit and that is going to be a big achievement for aam aadmi party we have only been in existence for uh, uh, you know a decade and in almost a decade we have a government in uh, two states delhi and punjab we have more than 10 rajya sabha mps we have councillors in chandigarh and in delhi we have mlas in goa likely to have mlas in gujarat we are the fastest growing political party that independent india has ever seen so on that count i will be very happy with whatever percentage we get because we are likely to become a national party however the what in, is the, the percentage you need for, for that state in me uh, and i think it's 6 6 well, 6 to 7% right you need a bare minimum of 6% yeah. 